Assyria, Wikipedia article audio. Assyria was a major Semitic-speaking Mesopotamian kingdom and empire of the ancient Near East and the Levant. It existed as a state from perhaps as early as the 25th century BC in the form of the Assur city-state, until its collapse between 612 BC and 605 BC, spanning the early to Middle Bronze Age through to the Late Iron Age. From the end of the 7th century BC to the mid-7th century AD, it survived as a geopolitical entity, for the most part ruled by foreign powers, although a number of Neo-Assyrian states arose at different times during the Parthian and early Sasanian empires between the mid-2nd century BC and late 3rd century AD, a period which also saw Assyria become a major center of Syriac Christianity and the birthplace of the Church of the East. Centered on the Tigris in Upper Mesopotamia, the Assyrians came to rule powerful empires at several times. Making up a substantial part of the greater Mesopotamian cradle of civilization, which included Sumer, the Akkadian Empire, and Babylonia, Assyria was at the height of technological, scientific, and cultural achievements for its time. At its peak, the Assyrian Empire stretched from Cyprus and the East Mediterranean to Iran, and from what is now Armenia and Azerbaijan in the Caucasus, to the Arabian Peninsula, Egypt, and eastern Libya. Names Prehistory Assyria is named after its original capital, the ancient city of Aaur, which dates to c. 2600 BC originally one of a number of Akkadian-speaking city-states in Mesopotamia. In the 25th and 24th centuries BC, Assyrian kings were pastoral leaders. From the late 24th century BC, the Assyrians became subject to Sargon of Akkad, who united all the Akkadian and Sumerian-speaking peoples of Mesopotamia under the Akkadian Empire which lasted from c. 2334 BC to 2154 BC. After its fall from power, the greater remaining part of Assyria was a geopolitical region and province of other empires, although between the mid-2nd century BC and late 3rd century AD a patchwork of small independent Assyrian kingdoms arose in the form of Ashur, Adiabani, Osren, Beth Nuhadra, Beth Garme, and Hatra. The region of Assyria fell under the successive control of the Median Empire, the Achaemenid Empire, the Macedonian Empire, the Seleucid Empire, the Parthian Empire, the Roman Empire, and the Sasanian Empire. The Arab Islamic conquest in the mid 7th century finally dissolved Assyria as a single entity after which the remnants of the Assyrian people gradually became an ethnic, linguistic, cultural, and religious minority in the Assyrian homeland, surviving there to this day as an indigenous people of the region. Assyria was also sometimes known as Subartu and Azuanam prior to the rise of the city-state of Ashur, after which it was Aaaarau, and after its fall from 605 BC through to the late 7th century AD variously as Achaemenid Assyria, and also referenced as Aturia, Ater, Athor, and sometimes as Syria which etymologically derives from Assyria according to Strabo, Syria, Assyria and Asa. Rista N. Assyria can also refer to the geographic region or heartland where Assyria, its empires, and the Assyrian people were centered. The indigenous modern Eastern Aramaic-speaking Assyrian Christian ethnic minority in northern Iraq, northeast Syria, southeast Turkey, and northwest Iran are the descendants of the ancient Assyrians. In prehistoric times, the region that was to become known as Assyria was home to a Neanderthal culture such as has been found at the Shanida cave. 
The earliest Neolithic sites in Assyria were the Jarmo culture c. 7100 BC and Tel Hasuna, the center of the Hasuna culture, c. 6000 BC. History The Akkadian-speaking people who would eventually found Assyria appear to have entered Mesopotamia at some point during the latter 4th millennium BC eventually intermingling with the earlier Sumerian-speaking population, with Akkadian names appearing in written record from as early as the 29th century BC. During the 3rd millennium BC, a very intimate cultural symbiosis developed between the Sumerians and the Akkadians throughout Mesopotamia, which included widespread bilingualism. The influence of Sumerian on Akkadian, and vice versa, is evident in all areas, from lexical borrowing on a massive scale, to syntactic, morphological, and phonological convergence. This has prompted scholars to refer to Sumerian and Akkadian in the 3rd millennium BC as a sprachbund. Akkadian gradually replaced Sumerian as the spoken language of Mesopotamia somewhere after the turn of the 3rd and the 2nd millennium BC although Sumerian continued to be used as a sacred, ceremonial, literary, and scientific language in Mesopotamia until the 1st century AD, as did use of the Akkadian cuneiform. Early Period The cities of Assur, Nineveh, Gajar, and Arbila together with a number of other towns and cities, existed since at least before the middle of the 3rd millennium BC although they appear to have been Sumerian-ruled administrative centers at this time, rather than independent states. Greco-Roman classical writers such as Julius Africanus, Marcus Valius Paterculus and Diodorus Siculus dated the founding of Assyria to various dates between 2284 BC and 2057 BC, listing the earliest king as Bolus or Ninus. According to the Biblical Generations of Noah, which appears to have been largely compiled between the 7th and 5th centuries BC, the city of Aaaur was allegedly founded by a Biblical Asher the son of Shem, who was deified by later generations as the city's patron god. However, the much older attested Assyrian tradition itself lists the first king of Assyria as the 25th century BC Tudiya, and an early urbanist Assyrian king named Ushpaya as having dedicated the first temple to the god Ashur in the city in the mid-21st century BC. It is highly likely that the city was named in honor of its patron Assyrian god with the same name. Akkadian Empire and Neo-Sumerian Empires The city of Aaaur, together with a number of other Assyrian cities, seem to have been established by 2600 BC. However it is likely that they were initially Sumerian-dominated administrative centers. In the late 26th century BC, Ian Adam of Lagash, then the dominant Sumerian ruler in Mesopotamia, mentions smiting Subartu. Similarly, in c. the early 25th century BC, Lugalan Mundu the king of the Sumerian state of Adab lists Subartu as paying tribute to him. Old Assyrian Empire Of the early history of the kingdom of Assyria, little is known. In the Assyrian king list, the earliest king recorded was Tudiya. According to George's Ru he would have lived in the mid-25th century BC, i.e. circa 2450 BC. In archaeological reports from Ebla, it appeared that Tudiya's activities were confirmed with the discovery of a tablet where he concluded a treaty for the operation of Akram in Eblate territory, with King Ibrium of Ebla. Adesid dynasty Tudiya was succeeded on the list by Adamu, the first known reference to the Semitic name Adam and then a further 13 rulers. Nothing concrete is yet known about these names, 
although it has been noted that a much later Babylonian tablet listing the ancestral lineage of Hammurabi, the Amorite king of Babylon, seems to have copied the same names from Tudiya through Nubu, though in a heavily corrupted form. The earliest kings, such as Tudiya, who are recorded as kings who lived in tents, were independent semi-nomadic pastoralist rulers. These kings at some point became fully urbanist and founded the city-state of Ashur in the mid-21st century BC. Decline, 1450 A Euro 1393 BC During the Akkadian Empire, the Assyrians, like all the Akkadian-speaking Mesopotamians, became subject to the dynasty of the city-state of Akkad, centered in central Mesopotamia. The Akkadian Empire founded by Sargon the Great claimed to encompass the surrounding four quarters. The region of Assyria, north of the seat of the empire in central Mesopotamia, had also been known as Subartub by the Sumerians, and the name Azuanam in Akkadian records also seems to refer to Assyria proper. The Sumerians were eventually absorbed into the Akkadian population. Assyrian rulers were subject to Sargon and his successors, and the city of Ashur became a regional administrative center of the empire, implicated by the Nuzi tablets. During this period, the Akkadian-speaking Semites of Mesopotamia came to rule an empire encompassing not only Mesopotamia itself but large swathes of Asia Minor, ancient Iran, Elam, the Arabian Peninsula, Canaan, and Syria. Assyria seems to have already been firmly involved in trade in Asia Minor by this time. The earliest known reference to Anatolian Kurams in Hatti was found on later cuneiform tablets describing the early period of the Akkadian Empire. On those tablets, Assyrian traders in Burushanda implored the help of their ruler, Sargon the Great, and this appellation continued to exist throughout the Assyrian Empire for about 1,700 years. The name Hatti itself even appears in later accounts of his grandson, Naram Sin, campaigning in Anatolia. Assyrian and Akkadian traders spread the use of writing in the form of the Mesopotamian cuneiform script to Asia Minor and the Levant. However, towards the end of the reign of Sargon the Great, the Assyrian faction rebelled against him. The tribes of Assyria of the upper country Euro in their turn attacked, but they submitted to his arms, and Sargon settled their habitations, and he smote them grievously. The Akkadian Empire was destroyed by economic decline and internal civil war, followed by attacks from barbarian Gushan people in 2154 BC. The rulers of Assyria during the period between c. 2154 BC and 2112 BC once again became fully independent, as the Gushans are only known to have administered southern Mesopotamia. However, the king list is the only information from Assyria for this period. Middle Assyrian Empire 1392 A Euro 1056 BC most of Assyria briefly became part of the Neo-Sumerian Empire founded in c. 2112 BC. Sumerian domination extended as far as the city of Ashur, but appears not to have reached Nineveh and the far north of Assyria. One local ruler named Zarekam is listed as paying tribute to Amar Sin of Or. Ashur's rulers appear to have remained largely under Sumerian domination until the mid-21st century BC, the king list names Assyrian rulers for this period and several are known from other references to have also borne the title of Shakanaka or vassal governors for the Neo-Sumerians. Society and Law in the Middle Assyrian Period 
Puzarashur I is speculated to have overthrown Kikia and founded an Assyrian dynasty which was to survive for eight generations until Irishim II was overthrown by Shamshiadadi. Puzarashur I's descendants left inscriptions mentioning him regarding the building of temples to gods such as Ashur, Adad, and Ishtar in Assyria. The length of Puzarashur I's reign is unknown. Hildegard Levy writing in the Cambridge Ancient History, sees Puzarashur I as part of a longer dynasty started by one of his predecessors, Sulili. Inscriptions link Puzarashur I to his immediate successors, who, according to the Assyrian king list, are related to the following kings down to Irishim II. Adad A. Euro Storm and Rain God, Anu Oran A. Euro God of Heaven and the Sky, Lord of Constellations, and Father of the Gods. The name is derived from Sumero Akkadian slash Anna slash, which means heaven, he is considered the father of great gods. In stories, he is Menadionid as a father, creator, and god, and is believed to be the supreme being, Dagon or Dagon a Euro god of fertility, Inki or Eaa Euro god of the Absu, crafts, water, intelligence, mischief, and creation and divine ruler of the earth and its humans, Erish Kigal A Euro goddess of Urkala, the underworld, Ishtar or Inanna slash Astart A Euro goddess of fertility, love, and war, Marduk A Euro patron deity of Babylon who eventually became regarded as the head of the Babylonian pantheon. Nabu A Euro God of Wisdom and Writing, Nanshi A Euro Goddess of Prophecy, Fertility, and Fishing, Nurgle A Euro God of Plague, War, and the Sun in its destructive capacity, later husband of Erish Kigal, Nine Her Sag or Mami, Balatili, Ki, Ninma, Nintu, or Aruru A Euro Earth and Mother Goddess, Ninlil A Euro Goddess of the Air, Consort of Enlil, Ninerda a Euro champion of the gods, the epitome of youthful vigor, and god of agriculture, Nisroch, god of agriculture. Some other religions also consider him the fallen angel or demon, Nusko, the messenger for the gods. A Euroe the offspring of the abyss, the creation of A with tilde A, and the likeness of his father the firstborn of Bel. Nusko was also considered a great commander, counselor of the gods, and protector of gods in heaven. Assyrian kings mention Nusko many times, especially before wars, Nusko was fearless in battle, Shamash or U2 a Euro god of the sun, arbiter of justice and patron of travelers, Sin or Nana a Euro god of the moon considered to be the prince of the gods. Described as having a perfect body, everything from beard to horns is perfect. The name is believed to come from a euro as an a euro but was changed at some point. Zuena means a euro or acknowledge lord a euro. Sin is also mentioned in other religions in Babylonia, Tammuz or Dumuzi a euro god of food and vegetation, Tiamat. Shalimuham, son and successor of Puzarashur I, is the earliest independent ruler to be attested in a contemporary inscription. Carved in curious archaic character mirror writing in old Assyrian on an alabaster block found during the German excavations at Assur under Walter Andrei. This sole exemplar of his contemporary inscriptions records that the god Asher a Euroe requested of him a Euro the construction of a temple and that he had a Euroe beer vats and storage area a Euro built in the a Euroe temple area a Euro he ruled during a period when nascent Assyrian merchant colonies were expanding into Anatolia to trade textiles and tin from Assur. For Silver Shalimuham and his successors bore the title IAAIA Euro trademark aka Aur, Vice Regent of Assur, as well as Ensa. Ilishuma, inscribed Ding Ure Umma, 
son and successor of Shalimaham 7 a Euro 8 and is known from his inscription where he claims to have washed the copper and established liberty for the Akkadians in the Sumerian city-states Ur, Nippur, and Ur. This has been taken by some scholars to imply that he made military campaigns into southern Mesopotamia to relieve his fellow Mesopotamians from Amorite and Elamite invasions. His construction activities included building the old temple of Ishtar, a city wall, subdivision of the city into house plots and diversion of the flow of two springs to the city gates, a euro yaushima euro and a euro awurtama euro. This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, Easton, Matthew George. Assyria Istan's Bible Dictionary T. Nelson and Sons Irishamai, son and successor of Ilishuma, vigorously expanded Assyrian colonies in Asia Minor during his long reign. It was during his reign that Kurams were established along trade routes into Anatolia in the cities of Kanesh, Amkawa, Hadassa, and 18 other locations yet to be identified some designated warbatums, satellites of and subordinate to the Kurums. The colonies traded tin, textiles, lapis lazuli, iron, antimony, copper, bronze, wool, and grain. Assyria during the Bronze Age Collapse, 1055 A Euro 936 BC Neo-Assyrian Empire Expansion 911 A Euro 627 BC Downfall, 626 A Euro 605 BC Akunam, son and successor of Ilishuma, built a major temple for the god Nergal. He further strengthened the fortifications of the city of Assur and maintained Assyria's colonies in Asia Minor. Sargani or Aarukani son and successor of Akunam, reigned as king of the old Assyrian Empire for an unusually long 39 years. Sargani might have been named after his predecessor Sargon of Akkad. The name A Euro Ezergana Euro means A Euro Earth King is legitimate A Euro in Akkadian. Sargani is known for his work refortifying Assur. Very little is known about this king. Puzarashur II, son and successor of Sargon I, was king of the old Assyrian Empire for eight years. Due to his father's long reign he came to the throne at a late age since one of his sons, named Ilibani, was a witness in a contract eleven years before Puzarashur II became ruler. Naramsin or Narama Urosun, son and successor of Puzarashur II, was named for the illustrious Naramsin of Akkad and, like his grandfather, Sargani, took the divine determinative in his name. Assyria was wealthy as the hub of the trading network at the height of the old Assyrian Empire's activity 46 Naramsin came under attack from Shamshiadad, in an attempt to usurp the Assyrian throne, however the would-be usurper was defeated and the Assyrian king list records that Shamshiadad I, a euro went away to Babylonia in the time of Nara MSA registered trademark and a euro Shamshiadad I was not to return until taking the Assyrian city of Akalatum, pausing three years and then overthrowing Irishim II, son and successor of Naram Sin. Shamshiadad I, conquered Assur took over the long-abandoned town of Shekna in northeastern Syria, converted it into the capital city of his Upper Mesopotamian Empire and renamed it Shabat and Lil. Shamshiadadai placed his sons in key geographical locations and gave them responsibility to look over those areas. While he remained in Ayubat and Lil, his eldest son, Ishmdagani was put on the throne of Akalatum. A main target for expansion was the city Mari, which controlled the caravan route between Anatolia and Mesopotamia. The king of Mari, Ayak Dunlim, was assassinated by his own servants, 
possibly on Shamshiadadai's orders. Shamshiadadai seized the opportunity and occupied Mari C. 1741 BC. Shamshiadadai put his second son, Yasmaadad on the throne in Mari, and then returned to Shabatan Lil. With the annexation of Mari, Shamshiadad was in control of a large empire, controlling central Mesopotamia, the northeastern Levant and swathes of eastern Asia Minor. While Ishmdagani probably was a competent ruler, his brother Yasmaadad appears to have been a man of weak character, something the disappointed father was not above mentioning. Shamshiadadai clearly kept a firm control on the actions of his sons, as shown in his many letters to them. At one point he arranged a political marriage between Yasmaadad to Beltam, the princess of his ally in Katna. Yasmaadad already had a leading wife and put Beltam in a secondary position of power. Shamshiadadai did not approve and forced his son to keep Beltam in the palace in a leading position. Assyria after the empire Daydusha, a king of the neighboring state Eshnunna, made an alliance with Shamshiadadai in order to conquer the area between the two Zab rivers c. 1727 BC. This military campaign of joint forces was commemorated on a victory steel which states that Daydusha gives the lands to Shamshiadadai. Shamshiadadai later turned against Daydusha by attacking cities including Shadupam and Naredam. Ishmdagani, son and successor of Shamshiadadai, main challenge was in keeping his enemies in check, to his east were the foothills of the Zagros Mountains inhabited by warlike pastoral peoples such as the Turuku, Kassites, and Lolobi, and to the south was the fellow Mesopotamian kingdom of Eshnunna. Although politically astute and a capable soldier, Ishmdagani became embroiled in a struggle for dominance of the Near East with Hammurabi, an Amorite who had turned the hitherto minor town of Babylon into a major city-state and begun a war of conquest creating the Babylonian Empire. It was from this period that the southern half of Mesopotamia CME to be known as Babylonia. Mutashkar, son and successor of Ishmdagani, was arranged by his father to marry the daughter of the Hurrian king Zaziyah. Hammurabi of the newly created Amorite-ruled state of Babylon, after first conquering Mari, Lursa, Eshnunna, and defeating Elam, eventually prevailed over Mutashkar. With Hammurabi, the various Karum colonies in Anatolia ceased trade activity a Euro probably because the goods of Assyria were now being traded with the Babylonians. The Assyrian monarchy survived, however. The three Amorite kings succeeding Ishmdagani were largely vassals and dependent on the Babylonians during the reign of Hammurabi. Achaemenid Assyria, Osren, Adiabani, Asa, Rista and Athura and Hatra. Achaemenid Assyria, Macedonian and Seleucid Assyria, Remush. Inscribed Mrimuu on the only variant king list on which he appears, a successor to and probably a descendant of Iamidaga Ni, would appear to be named for the second king of the Akkadian Empire Remush of Akkad. This perhaps reflects the extent to which Shamshiadad and his successors identified with the prestigious dynasty of Akkad, although the earlier Remush was apparently assassinated by his own courtiers. A euro with their seals a euro, according to a liver omen of the monumental BARA2 series, a somewhat ignominious end. The events resulting in the demise of the dynasty are witnessed in only one inscription, that of Puzersin, who boasted of overthrowing the son of Asinam, descendant of Shamshiadadai, whose name has not been preserved. This may have been Remush or if Asinam followed him, perhaps his grandson. The result was apparently turmoil as a rapid succession of seven usurpers took power, 
each reigning briefly before being overthrown. Asanam, possibly successor or descendant to either Remush or Mutashkar, was an Amorite king driven out by the Assyrian vice-regent Puzersin, not included in the standard king list, however, attested in Puzersin's inscription. Asanam is believed to have been a descendant of Shamshiadad who had founded the brief, foreign Amorite dynasty apparently greatly resented by the native Assyrians judging by an alabaster slab inscription left by Puzersin. Puzersin is believed to have been an otherwise unattested Assyrian monarch. Puzersin deposed Asanam to allow for the Assyrian king Ashur Dugal to seize the throne. A period of civil war followed this event which ended Babylonian and Amorite influence in Assyria c. 1665 BC. Ashur Dugal, inscribed ma a Dugul, a Euroelug to Ashur, a Euro, apparently, a Euroesan of Anobadia Euro, seized the throne from the three unpopular Amorite vassals. The Assyrian king list says of Ashur Dugul that he was a a Euroesan of a nobody, without right to the throne a Euro meaning that he was not of royal descent and consequently unqualified to govern according to the patrilineal principle of legitimacy relied upon by later monarchs. During Ashur Dugul's reign six other kings, a Euroesans of nobodies also ruled at the Jamia Euro. This may suggest a fragmentation in the small Assyrian kingdom, with rival claims to the throne. Ashur Dugul was unable to retain control for long, and was soon deposed by a rival claimant, Ashur Aplaidi, who was in turn followed by Nasir Sin, Sin Namir, Ibkai Ishtar and Adad Salulu. Adesai, a Euroesan of Anobadia Euro was the last of the six kings who ruled during the reign of Ashur Dugal. He managed to quell the civil unrest and stabilize the situation in Assyria. During his reign, he completely drove the Babylonians and Amorites from the Assyrian sphere of influence in the northern half of Mesopotamia. Babylonian Amorite power began to quickly wane in Mesopotamia as a whole the Sealand dynasty of the south of Mesopotamia driving out both the Amorites and Babylonians, leaving the Amorites controlling only a weak and small rump state in and around the city of Babylon itself. The Adesid dynasty of Assyria was named after Adesai. Belbani succeeded Adesai and continued to campaign successfully against the Babylonians and Amorites, after which Assyria entered a quiet and peaceful period for the next two centuries. Parthian Assyria Little is currently known of many of the kings that followed such as, Libya, Sharma Adadai, Iptersin, Bezaya, Lalaya, Shunainua and Sharma Adad II. However, Assyria seems to have been a relatively strong and stable nation, existing undisturbed by its neighbors such as the Hattians, Hittites, Hurrians, Amorites, Babylonians, Elamites, or Mitannians during this period. Assyria remained strong and secure, when Babylon was sacked and its Amorite rulers deposed by the Hittite Empire, and subsequently fell to the Kassites in 1595 BC. Both powers were unable to make any inroads into Assyria, and there seems to have been no trouble between the first Kassite ruler of Babylon, Agam II, and Erisham III of Assyria, and a mutually beneficial treaty was signed between the two rulers. Shamshiadad II, Ishmdagon II, and Shamshiadad III seem also to have had peaceful tenures, although few records have thus far been discovered about their reigns. Similarly, Ashur Narari I seems not to have been troubled by the newly founded Mitanni Empire in Asia Minor, the Hittite Empire, or Babylon during his 25-year reign. He is known to have been an active king, 
improving the infrastructure, dedicating temples, and conducting various building projects throughout the kingdom. Puzarashur III proved to be a strong and energetic ruler. He undertook much rebuilding work in Asur, the city was refortified and the southern quarters incorporated into the main city defences. Temples to the moon god Sin and the sun god Shamash were erected during his reign. He signed a treaty with Benabariashi the Kassite king of Babylon, defining the borders of the two nations in the late 16th century BC. He was succeeded by Enlil Nasir I who appears to have had a peaceful and uneventful reign, as does his successor Nurili. The son of Nurili, Ashur Shatuni was deposed by his uncle Ashur Rabi I in his first year of rule. Little is known about his 19-year reign, but it appears to have been largely uneventful. The emergence of the Mitanni Empire in the 16th century BC did eventually lead to a short period of sporadic Mitannian, Hurrian domination in the latter half of the 15th century. The Indo-European-speaking Mitannians are thought to have conquered and formed the ruling class over the indigenous Hurrians of eastern Anatolia. The Hurrians spoke a language isolate, i.e. neither Semitic nor Indo-European. Ashur Nadanerhai was courted by the Egyptians, who were rivals of Mitanni, and attempting to gain a foothold in the Near East. Amenhotep II sent the Assyrian king a tribute of gold to seal an alliance against the Huri Mitannian Empire. It is likely that this alliance prompted Sashtutter, the emperor of Mitanni, to invade Assyria, and sack the city of Ashur after which Assyria became a sometime vassal state, with Ashur Nadanerhai being deposed by Shaus Tatar and replaced by his own brother in Lil Nasir II in 1430 BC, who was then made to pay tribute to the Mitanni. Ashur Narari II had an uneventful reign, and appears to have also paid tribute to the Mitanni Empire. The Assyrian monarchy survived and the Mitannian influence appears to have been short-lived. They appear not to have been always willing or indeed able to interfere in Assyrian internal and international affairs. Ashur Belnishishos seems to have been independent of Mitannian influence, as evidenced by his signing a mutually beneficial treaty with Karandash, the Kassite king of Babylonia in the late 15th century. He also undertook extensive rebuilding work in Ashur itself, and Assyria appears to have redeveloped its former highly sophisticated financial and economic systems during his reign. Ashur Rimnishishu also undertook building work, strengthening the city walls of the capital. Ashur Nadanerh II also received a tribute of gold and diplomatic overtures from Egypt probably in an attempt to gain Assyrian military support against Egypt's Mitannian and Hittite rivals in the region. However, the Assyrian king appears not to have been in a strong enough position to challenge Mitanni or the Hittites. Ariba Adadai, a son of Ashur Belnishishu, ascended the throne in 1392 BC and finally broke the ties to the Mitanni Empire and instead began to exert Assyrian influence on the Mitanni. The middle period saw reigns of great kings, such as Ashur Ubalat I, Arik Denili, Tukulti Ninurta I and Tiglath Pileser I. During this period, Assyria overthrew the empire of the Huri, Mitanni and eclipsed the Hittite Empire, Egyptian Empire, Babylonia, Elam, Canaan, and Phrygia in the Near East. By the reign of Ariba Adadai Mitanni influence over Assyria was on the wane. Ariba Adadai became involved in a dynastic battle between Tushrata and his brother Ardatama II and after this his son Shuttarna III, who called himself king of the Huri while seeking support from the Assyrians. The Hittites, having failed to save Mitanni, allied with Babylon in an unsuccessful economic war against Assyria for many years. 
Assyria was now a large and powerful empire, and a major threat to Egyptian and Hittite interests in the region, and was perhaps the reason that these two powers, fearful of Assyrian might, made peace with one another. Shalmaneser's son and successor, Tukulti Ninurta I, won a major victory against the Hittites and their king Tadhalia IV at the Battle of Neriya and took thousands of prisoners. He then conquered Babylonia, taking Kashtiliash IV as a captive and ruled there himself as king for seven years, taking on the old title King of Sumer and Akkad first used by Sargon of Akkad. Tukulti Ninurta I thus became the first Akkadian-speaking native Mesopotamian to rule the state of Babylonia, its founders having been foreign Amorites, succeeded by equally foreign Kassites. Tukulti Ninurta petitioned the god Shamash before beginning his counter-offensive. Kashtiliash IV was captured, single-handed by Tukulti Ninurta according to his account who trod with my feet upon his lordly neck as though it were a footstool and deported him ignominiously in chains to Assyria. The victorious Assyrians demolished the walls of Babylon, massacred many of the inhabitants, pillaged and plundered his way across the city to the Esagila temple, where he made off with the statue of Marduk. Middle Assyrian texts recovered at ancient Da'ar Katlimu, include a letter from Tukulti Ninurta to his Sukal Rubi U, or Grand Vizier, Ashuridan advising him of the approach of his general Shulman Mushafshu escorting the captive Kashtiliash, his wife, and his retinue which incorporated a large number of women, on his way to exile after his defeat. In the process he defeated the Elamites, who had themselves coveted Babylon. He also wrote an epic poem documenting his wars against Babylon and Elam. He progressed further south into what is today Arabia, conquering the pre-Arab South Semitic kingdoms of Dilmun and Malaha. After a Babylonian revolt, he raided and plundered the temples in Babylon, regarded as an act of sacrilege. As relations with the priesthood in Ashur began deteriorating, Tukulti Ninurta built a new capital city, Kar Tukulti Ninurta. The Aramaeans of northern and central Syria were the next targets of the Assyrian king, who made his way as far as the sources of the Tigris. The control of the high road to the Mediterranean was secured by the possession of the Hittite town of Petru at the junction between the Euphrates and Sejur. Thence he proceeded to conquer the Canaanite-slash-Phoenician city-states of Byblos, Tyre, Sidon, Samira, Berytus, Aridus, and finally Arvad where he embarked onto a ship to sail the Mediterranean, on which he killed an Ahiru or seahorse in the sea. He was passionately fond of hunting and was also a great builder. The general view is that the restoration of the temple of the gods Ashur and Hadad at the Assyrian capital of Assur was one of his initiatives. Roman Assyria Christian period Ashur Belkala kept the vast empire together, campaigning successfully against Eurito and Phrygia to the north and the Arameans to the west. He maintained friendly relations with Marduk Shapixari of Babylon, however upon the death of that king, he invaded Babylonia and deposed the new ruler Kadam and Beria, appointing Adatapla Idina as his vassal in Babylon. He built some of the earliest examples of both zoological gardens and botanical gardens in Ashur, collecting all manner of animals and plants from his empire and receiving a collection of exotic animals as tributes from Egypt. Late in his reign, the Middle Assyrian Empire erupted into civil war, when a rebellion was orchestrated by Tukulti Mer, a pretender to the throne of Assyria. Ashur Belkala eventually crushed Tukulti Mer and his allies, however the civil war in Assyria had allowed hordes of Arameans to take advantage of the situation, and press in on Assyrian-controlled territory from the west. Ashur Belkala counter-attacked them, 
and conquered as far as Kar Chemish and the source of the Khabar River, but by the end of his reign many of the areas of Syria and Phoenicia Canaan to the west of these regions as far as the Mediterranean, previously under firm Assyrian control, were eventually lost to the Assyrian Empire. Sassanid Assyria The Middle Assyrian Kingdom was well organized, and in the firm control of the king, who also functioned as the high priest of Ashur, the state god. He had certain obligations to fulfill in the cult, and had to provide resources for the temples. The priesthood became a major power in Assyrian society. Conflicts with the priesthood are thought to have been behind the murder of King Tukulti Ninurta I. Arab Islamic Conquest Mongol Empire Breakup of the Assyrian Church Modern History Ottoman Empire Simile Massacre and World War II Baathism Syrian Civil War Culture Language Religion Ancient Assyrian Religion Christian History of the Assyrian People Architecture The Middle Assyrian period was marked by the long wars fought that helped build Assyria into a warrior society. The king depended on both the citizen class and priests in his capital, and the landed nobility who supplied the horses needed by Assyria's military. Documents and letters illustrate the importance of the latter to Assyrian society. Assyria needed less artificial irrigation than Babylonia, and horse breeding was extensive. Portions of elaborate texts about the care and training of them have been found. Trade was carried out in all directions. The mountain country to the north and west of Assyria was a major source of metal ore, as well as lumber. Economic factors were a common case of spelly. All free male citizens were obliged to serve in the army for a time, a system which was called the Ilku service. A legal code was produced during the 14th and 13th centuries which, among other things, clearly shows that the social position of women in Assyria was lower than that of neighboring societies. Men were permitted to divorce their wives with no compensation paid to the latter. If a woman committed adultery, she could be beaten or put to death. It's not certain if these laws were seriously enforced, but they appear to be a backlash against some older documents that granted things like equal compensation to both partners in divorce. The women of the king's harem and their servants were also subject to harsh punishments, such as beatings, mutilation, and death. Assyria, in general, had much harsher laws than most of the region. Executions were not uncommon, nor were whippings followed by forced labor. Some offenses allowed the accused a trial under torture or duress. One tablet that covers property rights has brutal penalties for violators. A creditor could force debtors to work for him, but not sell them. In the Middle Assyrian laws, sex crimes were punished identically whether they were homosexual or heterosexual. An individual faced no punishment for penetrating a cult prostitute, someone of an equal social class or someone whose gender roles were not considered solidly masculine. Such sexual relations were even seen as good fortune. However, homosexual relationships with royal attendants, between soldiers, or with those where a social better was submissive or penetrated were either treated as rape or seen as bad omens, and punishments applied. One historian notes that the laws would not be so detailed if homosexual behavior were not a familiar aspect of daily life of early Mesopotamia. The Bronze Age collapse from 1200 BC to 900 BC was a dark age for the entire Near East, North Africa, Asia Minor, 
Caucasus, Mediterranean and Balkan regions, with great upheavals and mass movements of people. Assyria and its empire were not unduly affected by these tumultuous events for some 150 years, perhaps the only ancient power that was not. However, Upon the death of Ashur Bel Kala in 1056 BC, Assyria went into a comparative decline for the next 100 or so years. The empire shrank significantly, and by 1020 BC Assyria appears to have controlled only areas close to Assyria itself, essential to keeping trade routes open in eastern Aramea, southeastern Asia Minor, Central Mesopotamia and northwestern Iran. New West Semitic speaking peoples such as the Arameans, Chaldeans, and Sudians moved into areas to the west and south of Assyria, including overrunning much of Babylonia to the south. Indo European speaking Iranic peoples such as the Medes, Persians, Sarmatians, and Parthians moved into the lands to the east of Assyria displacing the native Kassites and Gushans and pressuring Elam and Mania, and to the north in Asia Minor the Phrygians overran that part of the Hittites not already destroyed by Assyria, and Lydia emerged, a new Hurrian state named Eurydo arose in the Caucasus, and Sumerians, Colchians, and Scythians around the Black Sea and Caucasus. Egypt was divided and in disarray, and Israelites were battling with other West Asian peoples such as the Amalekites, Moabites, Edomites, and Ammonites and the non-Semitic-speaking Peleset slash Philistines for the control of southern Canaan. Dorian Greeks usurped the earlier Mycenaean Greeks in Western Asia Minor, and the Sea peoples ravaged the Eastern Mediterranean. Other new peoples such as the Sarmatians, Arabs, Nubians, and Kushites were to emerge later, during the Neo-Assyrian Empire. Despite the apparent weakness of Assyria in comparison to its former might, at heart it in fact remained a solid, well-defended nation whose warriors were the best in the world. Assyria with its stable monarchy, powerful army, and secure borders was in a stronger position during this time than potential rivals such as Egypt, Babylonia, Elam, Phrygia, Eurydo, Persia, Lydia and Media. Kings such as Ashur Bel Kala, Ariba Adad II, Ashur Rabi II, Ashur Nazirbal I, Tiglath Pileser II and Ashur Dan II successfully defended Assyria's borders and upheld stability during this tumultuous time. Assyrian kings during this period appear to have adopted a policy of maintaining and defending a compact, secure nation and satellite colonies immediately surrounding it, and interspersed this with sporadic punitive raids and invasions of neighboring territories when the need arose. The Neo-Assyrian Empire is usually considered to have begun with the accession of Adad-Nirari II in 911 BC, lasting until the fall of Nineveh at the hands of the Babylonians, Chaldeans, Medes-Persians, Scythians, and Sumerians in 612 BC. Assyria maintained a large and thriving rural population, combined with a number of well-fortified cities. Major Assyrian cities during this period included, Nineveh, Assur, Kalhu, Arbila, Arifa, Dersharakan, Imgurin Lil, Karchemish, Haran, Tushhan, Tilbarsip, Ikolatum, Kanesh, Kartukulti Ninurda, Urhai, Guzana, Kehut, Amid. Ma copyright Rida, Iva, Safarvaim, Rachi, Purus Handa, Sabata, Birdha, Tel Shemshera, Durkatlimu, and Shekna. Assyria once more began to expand with the rise of Adad Nirari II in 911 BC. He cleared Aramean and other tribal peoples from Assyria's borders and began to expand in all directions into Anatolia, ancient Iran, Levant, and Babylonia. Ashurnazirpal II continued this expansion apace, 
subjugating much of the Levant to the west, the newly arrived Persians and Medes to the east, annexed central Mesopotamia from Babylon to the south, and expanded deep into Asia Minor to the north. He moved the capital from Ashur to Kalhu and undertook impressive building works throughout Assyria. Shulmaneser III projected Assyrian power even further, conquering to the foothills of the Caucasus, Israel and Aram Damascus, and subjugating Persia and the Arabs who dwelt to the south of Mesopotamia, as well as driving the Egyptians from Canaan. It was during the reign of Shulmaneser III that the Arabs and Chaldeans first enter the pages of recorded history. Little further expansion took place under Shamshiadad V and his successor, the regent queen Samiramis, however when Adad-Nirari III came of age, he took the reins of power from mother and set about a relentless campaign of conquest, subjugated the Aramines, Phoenicians, Philistines, Israelites, Neo-Hittites and Edomites, Persians, Medes and Manines, penetrating as far as the Caspian Sea. He invaded and subjugated Babylonia, and then the migrant Chaldean and Sudian tribes settled in southeastern Mesopotamia whom he conquered and reduced to vassalage. Assyria then ceased to expand further for a time, until the reign of Tiglath-Pileser III. He created the world's first professional army, introduced Imperial Aramaic as the lingua franca of Assyria and its vast empire, and reorganized the empire drastically. Tiglath-Pileser III conquered as far as the East Mediterranean, bringing the Greeks of Cyprus, Phoenicia, Judah, Philistia, Samara, and the whole of Aramea under Assyrian control. Not satisfied with merely holding Babylonia in vassalage, Tiglath-Pileser deposed its king and had himself crowned king of Babylon. The imperial, economic, political, Military and administrative reforms of Tiglath-Pileser III were to prove a blueprint for future empires, such as those of the Persians, Greeks, Romans, Carthaginians, Byzantines, Arabs and Turks. Shulmaneser V reigned only briefly, but once more drove the Egyptians from southern Canaan, where they were fomenting revolt against Assyria. Sargon II quickly took Samaria, effectively ending the northern kingdom of Israel and carrying 27,000 people away into captivity into the Israelite diaspora. He was forced to fight a war to drive out the Scythians and Samarians who had attempted to invade Assyria's vassal states of Persia and Media. The Neo-Hittite states of northern Syria were conquered, as well as Cilicia. Lydia and Commagene King Midas of Phrygia, fearful of Assyrian power, offered his hand in friendship. Elam was defeated and Babylonia and Chaldea reconquered. He made a new capital city named Dur Sharakan. He was succeeded by his son Sennacherib who moved the capital to Nineveh and made the deported peoples work on improving Nineveh's system of irrigation canals. Nineveh was transformed into the largest city in the world at the time. Esarhaddon had Babylon rebuilt, he imposed a vassal treaty upon his Persian, Median and Parthian subjects, and he once more defeated the Scythes and Sumerians. Tiring of Egyptian interference in the Assyrian Empire, Esarhaddon decided to conquer Egypt. In 671 BC he crossed the Sinai Desert, invaded and took Egypt with surprising ease and speed. He drove its foreign Nubian slash Kushite and Ethiopian rulers out, destroying the Kushite Empire in the process. Esarhaddon declared himself king of Egypt, Libya, and Kush. Esarhaddon stationed a small army in northern Egypt and describes how, all Ethiopians I deported from Egypt, leaving not one left to do homage to me. He installed native Egyptian princes throughout the land to rule on his behalf. Under Ashurbanipal, 
an unusually well-educated king for his time who could speak, read, and write in Sumerian, Akkadian and Aramaic, Assyrian domination spanned from the Caucasus Mountains in the north to Nubia, Egypt, Libya, and Arabia in the south, and from the East Mediterranean, Cyprus, and Antioch in the west to Persia, Sisha and the Caspian Sea in the east. Ultimately, Assyria conquered Babylonia, Chaldea, Elam, Media, Persia, Urito, Phoenicia, Aramea-Syria, Phrygia, the Neo-Hittite states, the Hurrian lands, Arabia, Gudium, Israel, Judah, Samara, Moab, Edom, Corduan, Cilicia, Mania, and Cyprus, and defeated and slash or exacted tribute from Scythia, Samaria, Lydia, Nubia, Ethiopia, and others. At its height, the empire encompassed the whole of the modern nations of Iraq, Syria, Egypt, Lebanon, Israel, Palestine, Jordan, Kuwait, Bahrain, Palestine, and Cyprus, together with large swathes of Iran, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, Sudan, Libya, Armenia, Georgia, and Azerbaijan. The Assyrian Empire was severely crippled following the death of Ashurbanipal in 627 Bgayuro the nation and its empire descending into a prolonged and brutal series of civil wars involving three rival kings, Ashuretilani, Sinshumulashir, and Sinsharishkan. Egypt's 26th dynasty, which had been installed by the Assyrians as vassals, quietly detached itself from Assyria, although it was careful to retain friendly relations. The Scythians and Sumerians took advantage of the bitter fighting among the Assyrians to raid Assyrian colonies, with hordes of horse-borne marauders ravaging parts of Asia Minor and the Caucasus where the vassal kings of Urito and Lydia begged their Assyrian overlord for help in vain. They also raided the Levant, Israel, and Judah and all the way into Egypt whose coasts were ravaged and looted with impunity. The Iranic peoples, aided by the previous Assyrian destruction of the hitherto dominant Elamites of ancient Iran, also took advantage of the upheavals in Assyria to coalesce into a powerful Median-dominated force which destroyed the pre-Iranic Assyrian vassal kingdom of Mania and absorbed the remnants of the pre-Iranic Elamites of southern Iran, and the equally pre-Iranic Gushans, Manines, and Kassites of the Zagros Mountains and the Caspian Sea. Syaxares, in an alliance with the Scythians and Sumerians, launched a surprise attack on a civil war beleaguered Assyria in 615 BC, sacking Kalhu and taking Arapka and Gajar. Nabopolassar, still pinned down in southern Mesopotamia by Assyrian forces, was completely uninvolved in this major breakthrough against Assyria. Despite the sorely depleted state of Assyria, bitter fighting ensued. Throughout 614 BC the alliance of powers continued to gradually make hard-fought inroads into Assyria itself, however in 613 BC the Assyrians somehow rallied against the odds and scored a number of counter-attacking victories over the Medes Persians, Babylonians Chaldeans, and Scythians Sumerians. This led to the coalition of forces ranged against it to unite and launch a massive combined attack in 612 BC, finally besieging and entering Nineveh in late 612 BC, with Sinsharishkin being slain in the bitter street-by-street -street fighting. Despite the loss of almost all of its major cities, and in the face of overwhelming odds, Assyrian resistance continued under ashur Ubalat II who fought his way out of Nineveh and coalesced Assyrian forces around Haran, Karchemish and in the vassal kingdom of Urito. However, the alliance of powers took Haran in 608 BC, and after a failed bid to recapture the city by the Assyrian king the same year, Karchemish II fell in 605 BC. Sections of the Assyrian army retreated to the western corner of Assyria after the fall of Haran and Karchemish, 
and a number of Assyrian imperial records survive between 604 BC and 599 BC in and around the Assyrian city of Dur Katlimu in what is today northeastern Syria, and so it is possible that remnants of the Assyrian administration and army still continued to hold out in the region for a few years. Certainly by 599 BC at the very latest, Assyria had been destroyed as an independent political entity, although it was to launch major rebellions against the Achaemenid Empire in 546 BC and 520 BC, and remained a geopolitical region, ethnic entity, and colonized province until the late 7th century AD with small Assyrian states emerging in the region between the 2nd century BC and 4th century AD. Assyria was initially ruled by the short-lived Median Empire after its fall. In a twist of fate, Nabonidus the last king of Babylon was himself an Assyrian from Haran. He had overthrown the short-lived Chaldean dynasty in Babylonia, after which the Chaldeans disappeared from history being fully absorbed into the native population of Babylonia. However, apart from plans to dedicate religious temples in the city of Haran, Nabonidus showed little interest in rebuilding Assyria. Nineveh and Kalhu remained in ruins with only small numbers of Assyrians living within them, conversely a number of towns and cities such as Arapka, Guzana, Nohadra, and Haran remained intact and Assur and Arbila were not completely destroyed, as is attested by their later revival. However, Assyria spent much of this short period in a degree of devastation following its fall. After the Medes were overthrown by the Persians as the dominant force in ancient Iran, Assyria was ruled by the Persian Achaemenid Empire from 549 BC to 330 BC. Between 546 and 545 BC, Assyria rebelled against the new Persian dynasty, which had usurped the previous Median dynasty. The rebellion centered around Tyre was eventually quashed by Cyrus the Great. Assyria seems to have recovered dramatically, and flourished during this period. It became a major agricultural and administrative center of the Achaemenid Empire, and its soldiers were a mainstay of the Persian army. In fact, Assyria even became powerful enough to raise another full-scale revolt against the Persian Empire in 520 Euro 519 BC. The Persians had spent centuries under Assyrian domination, and Assyrian influence can be seen in Achaemenid art, infrastructure, and administration. Early Persian rulers saw themselves as successors to Ashurbanipal, and Mesopotamian Aramaic was retained as the lingua franca of the empire for over 200 years, and Greek writers such as Thucydides still referred to it as the Assyrian language. Nineveh was never rebuilt however, and 200 years after it was sacked Xenophon reported only small numbers of Assyrians living amongst its ruins. Conversely the ancient city of Assur once more became a rich and prosperous entity. It was in 5th century BC Assyria that the Syriac language and Syriac script evolved. Five centuries later these were later to have a global influence as the liturgical language and written script for Syriac Christianity and its accompanying Syriac literature which also emerged in Assyria before spreading throughout the Near East, Asia Minor, the Caucasus, Central Asia, the Indian subcontinent and China. In 332 BC, Assyria fell to Alexander the Great the Macedonian emperor, who called the inhabitants Assyrioi. The Macedonian Empire was partitioned in 312 BC. It thereafter became part of the Seleucid Empire. It is from this period that the later Syria vs Assyria naming controversy arises, 
the Seleucids applied the name Syria which is a 9th century BC Indo-Anatolian derivation of Assyria not only to Assyria itself, but also to the Levantine lands to the west, which had been part of the Assyrian Empire but, the northeast corner aside, never a part of Assyria proper. When the Seleucids lost control of Assyria proper, the name Syria survived but was erroneously applied not only to the land of Assyria itself, but also now to Aramea to the west that had once been part of the Assyrian Empire, but apart from the northeastern corner, had never been a part of Assyria itself, nor inhabited by Assyrians. This was to lead to both the Assyrians from northern Mesopotamia and the Arameans and Phoenicians from the Levant being collectively dubbed Syrians in Greco-Roman and later European culture, regardless of ethnicity, history, or geography. During Seleucid rule, Assyrians ceased to hold the senior military, economic and civil positions they had enjoyed under the Achaemenids, being largely replaced by Greeks. The Greek language also replaced Mesopotamian East Aramaic as the lingua franca of the empire, although this did not affect the Assyrian population themselves, who were not Hellenist during the Seleucid era. During the Seleucid period in southern Mesopotamia, Babylon was gradually abandoned in favor of a new city named Seleucia on the Tigris effectively bringing an end to Babylonia as a geopolitical entity. By 150 BC, Assyria was largely under the control of the Parthian Empire. The Parthians seem to have exercised only loose control over Assyria, and between the mid-2nd century BC and 4th century AD a number of Neo-Assyrian states arose, these included the ancient capital of Assur itself. Adiabani with its capital of Arbila, Beth Nuhudra with its capital of Nuhudra, Osren, with its capitals of Edessa and Amid, Hatra, and Uuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuu
the last being Assur itself in the late 250s to early 260s. Christianity continued to spread, and many of the ethnically Assyrian churches that exist today are among the oldest in the world. For example, the Syriac Orthodox Church is purported to have been founded by Saint Peter himself in 67 AD. Nevertheless, although predominantly Christian, a minority of Assyrians still held on to their ancient Mesopotamian religion until as late as the 10th or 11th century AD. The Assyrians lived in a province known as Assuristan, and the region was on the frontier of the Byzantine and Sassanian empires. The land was known as Asa. Rista and during this period, and became the birthplace of the distinct Church of the East and a center of the Syriac Orthodox Church, with the flourishing Syriac Christian culture which exists there to this day. Temples were still being dedicated to the national god Ashur in his home city, in Haran, and elsewhere during the 4th and 5th centuries AD, indicating the ancient pre-Christian Assyrian identity was still extant to some degree. During the Sassanian period, much of what had once been Babylonia in southern Mesopotamia was incorporated into Assyria, and in effect the whole of Mesopotamia came to be known as Asa. Rista N. Parts of Assyria appear to have been semi-independent as late as the latter part of the 4th century AD, with a king named Sennacherib II reputedly ruling the northern reaches in 370s AD. Centuries of constant warfare between the Byzantine Empire and Sassanid Empire left both empires exhausted, which made both of them open to loss in a war against the Muslim Arab army, under the newfound Rashidun Caliphate. After the early Islamic conquests, Assyria was dissolved as an official administrative entity by an empire. Under Arab rule, Mesopotamia as a whole underwent a gradual process of further Arabization and the beginning of Islamification, and the region saw a large influx of non-indigenous Arabs, Kurds, Iranian, and Turkic peoples. However, the indigenous Assyrian population of northern Mesopotamia retained their language, religion, culture, and identity. Under the Arab Islamic empires, the Christian Assyrians were classed as Jehimus, who had certain restrictions imposed upon them. Assyrians were thus excluded from specific duties and occupations reserved for Muslims, they did not enjoy the same political rights as Muslims, their word was not equal to that of a Muslim in legal and civil matters without a Muslim witness. They were subject to payment of a special tax and they were banned from spreading their religion further in Muslim-ruled lands. However, personal matters such as marriage and divorce were governed by the cultural laws of the Assyrians. For those reasons, and even during the Sassanian period before Islamic rule, the Assyrian Church of the East formed a church structure that spread Nestorian Christianity to as far away as China, in order to proselytize away from Muslim-ruled regions in Iran and their homeland in Mesopotamia, with evidence of their massive church structure being the Nestorian Steel, an artifact found in China which documented over 100 years of Christian history in China from 600 to 781 AD. Assyrian Christians maintained relations with fellow Christians in Armenia and Georgia throughout the Middle Ages. In the 12th century AD, Assyrian priests interceded on behalf of persecuted Arab Muslims in Georgia. The Assyrian church structure thrived during the period of 600 AU 1300, and is regarded as a golden age for Assyrians. The first signs of trouble for the Assyrians started in the 13th century, when the Mongols first invaded the Near East after the fall of Baghdad in 1258 to Hulagu Khan. Assyrians at first did very well under Mongol rule, as the shamanist Mongols were sympathetic to them, 
with the Syrian priests having traveled to Mongolia centuries before. The Mongols in fact spent most of their time oppressing Muslims and Jews, outlawing the practice of circumcision and halal butchery, as they found them repulsive and violent. Therefore, as one of the only groups in the region looked at in a good light, Assyrians were given special privileges and powers, with Ha one-fourth Lega one-fourth even appointing an Assyrian Christian governor to Erbil, and allowing the Syriac Orthodox Church to build a church there. However, the Mongol rulers in the Near East eventually converted to Islam. Sustained persecutions of Christians throughout the entirety of the Il Khanate began in earnest in 1295 under the rule of Oarat Amir Nauras, which affected the indigenous Assyrian Christians greatly. During the reign of the Il Khan Aljida IV, the Assyrian Christian inhabitants of Erbil seized control of the citadel and much of the city in rebellion against the Muslims. In spring 1310, the Mongol Malik of the region attempted to seize it from them with the help of the Kurds and Arabs, but was defeated. After his defeat he decided to siege the city. The Assyrians held out for three months, but the citadel was at last taken by Ilkhanate troops and Arab, Turkic and Kurdish tribesmen on July 1, 1310. The defenders of the citadel fought to the last man, and many of the Assyrian inhabitants of the lower town were subsequently massacred. Regardless of these hardships, the Assyrian people remained numerically dominant in the north of Mesopotamia as late as the 14th century AD, and the city of Assur functioned as their religious and cultural capital. However, in the mid-14th century the Muslim Turk ruler Tamerlane conducted a religiously motivated massacre of the indigenous Assyrian Christians, and worked tirelessly to destroy the vast Assyrian church structure established throughout the Far East, destroying the entire structure of the church with the exception of the St. Thomas Christians of the Malabar coast in India, whom number 10 million or so in modern times. After Timur's campaign, the Assyrian cultural and religious capital of Assur was completely destroyed, thousands of Assyrians were massacred, the vast church structure of the Assyrian Church of the East was decimated, and the Assyrian population was from that point on reduced to a small minority living within Muslim-dominated lands. Around 100 years after the massacres by Timur, a religious schism known as the Schism of 1552 occurred among the Assyrians of northern Mesopotamia, when a large number of followers of the Assyrian Church of the East in Amid elected a rival patriarch named Shimon VIII Yohanan Soleika after becoming dissatisfied with the leadership of the Assyrian Church, at this point based in al Kosh. Due to a need for an ordination by a metropolitan bishop, Soleika went into communion with the Roman Catholic Church after at first failing to gain acceptance within the Syriac Orthodox Church. Rome named this new church the Church of Assyria and Mosul and its first leader Patriarch of the East Assyrians in 1553 AD. Soon after coming back Soleika was assassinated by supporters of the rival Patriarch in al Kosh but was able to form a new church structure and line of succession known as the Shimon line prior to his death. This group of Assyrians eventually broke off ties with Rome, moved en masse to the Hakari Mountains, and returned to the Assyrian church they once adhered to prior to the schism of 1552, while still operating independently from the original Assyrian church structure based in al Kosh. A decade or so before the Shimon line broke off ties with Rome, another faction within the Assyrian Church entered into communion with Rome known as the Josephite line, and upon the Shimon line leaving, inherited the now vacant Church of Assyria and Mosul, which was renamed the Chaldean Catholic Church by the Vatican in 1683.
This is now believed to be due to an error by the Roman Catholic Church which already had a history of labeling Eastern Christians as Chaldeans, but due to that error, some of their followers became known as Chaldean Catholics or Chaldo-Assyrians, despite having absolutely no ethnic, historical, linguistic, cultural, or geographic connections whatsoever to the by now long extinct Chaldean tribe of southeast Mesopotamia. However, these appellations appear to have only emerged relatively recently, as in the late 19th century, Hormuzd Rassam, himself a member of the Chaldean Catholic Church, states that church members were using the ethnic term Assyrian and the theological term Nestorian to describe themselves. Later on in the 1830s the original Assyrian Church of the East structure in al Kosh combined with the Catholic one, creating the modern Chaldean Catholic Church structure, which is ironic considering that the only remaining ethnic Assyrian Church to practice the Assyrian Church of the East denomination was the first one to split from the Assyrian Church of the East back in 1552. There was also another Nestorian denomination known as the Ancient Church of the East, which split from the Assyrian Church of the East due to reforms passed under the rule of Shimon XXIII Ishai in the 1960s, but with the election of Georgius III in 2015 the churches had a reconciliation, and reunited. In addition to the Eastern Rite churches, the Syriac Orthodox Church also has a large number of ethnically Assyrian adherents, who are known sometimes as Syriacs, the term Syriac being etymologically derived from Assyrian. The Syriac Orthodox Church has 5 million adherents across the globe, but is based in Damascus. However, since the 11th century it was based in the Safran Monastery of Tur Abdon and prior to that it was based in Antioch. Like the Nestorian churches, schisms also occurred within the Syriac Orthodox Church. In 1626 Jesuit and Capuchin missionaries began to proselytize among the Syriac Orthodox faithful at Aleppo, forming a larger pro-Catholic movement within the Syriac Orthodox Church. So in 1662, when the Syriac Orthodox Patriarchate had fallen vacant, the Catholic Party was able to elect one of its own, Andrew Akijan as Patriarch of the Syriac Church. This provoked a split in the community, and after Akijan Euro trademark s death in 1677 two opposing patriarchs were elected with one of those becoming the first patriarch of the Syriac Catholic Church. This line of succession died out quickly, however, but in 1782 with the election of Michael Jarway as patriarch the Ignatius line has been the head of the Syriac Catholic Church since then, and also has its base in Damascus. After these splits, the Assyrians suffered a number of religiously and ethnically motivated massacres throughout the 17th, 18th, and 19th centuries, such as the massacres of Badrakhan which resulted in the massacre of over 10,000 Assyrians in the 1840s, culminating in the large-scale Hamidian massacres of unarmed men, women, and children by Turks and Kurds in the 1890s at the hands of the Ottoman Empire and its associated militias, which greatly reduced their numbers, particularly in southeastern Turkey where over 25,000 Assyrians were murdered. The Adana massacre of 1909 largely aimed at Armenian Christians also accounted for the murder of some 1,500 Assyrians. Arts and Sciences Legacy Notes Notes 2 The Assyrians suffered a further catastrophic series of events during World War I in the form of the religiously and ethnically motivated Assyrian genocide at the hands of the Ottomans and their Kurdish and Arab allies from 1915 to 1918. 
Some sources claim that the highest number of Assyrians killed during the period was 750,000, while a 1922 Assyrian assessment set it at 275,000. The Assyrian genocide ran largely in conjunction with the similarly ethno-religiously motivated Armenian genocide, Greek genocide, and Great Famine of Mount Lebanon. In reaction against Ottoman cruelty, the Assyrians took up arms, and an Assyrian War of Independence was fought during World War I which took place in what is today southeastern Turkey, northern Iraq, northwestern Iran and northeastern Syria. For a time, the Assyrians fought successfully against overwhelming numbers, scoring a number of victories against the Ottomans and Kurds, and also hostile Arab and Iranian groups. However, due to the collapse of the Russian Empire a euro due to the Russian Revolution a euro and the similar collapse of the Armenian defense, the Assyrians were left without allies. As a result, the Assyrians were vastly outnumbered, outgunned, surrounded, cut off, and without supplies. The only option they had was to flee the region into northwest Iran and fight their way with around 50,000 civilians in tow, to British train lines going to mandatory Iraq. The sizable Assyrian presence in southeastern Anatolia which had endured for over four millennia was thus reduced to no more than 15,000 by the end of World War I, and by 1924 many of those who remained were forcibly expelled in a display of ethnic cleansing by the Turkish government with many leaving and later founding villages in the Subna and Nala valleys in the Dohuk Governorate of Iraq. In 1920 the Assyrian settlements in Mindan and Bakuba were attacked by Iraqi Arabs, but the Assyrian tribesmen displayed their military prowess by successfully defeating and driving off the Arab forces. The Assyrians also sided with the British during the Iraqi revolt against the British. The Assyrian levies were founded by the British in 1922, with ancient Assyrian military rankings, such as Rab Sheke, Rab Talia, and Turdanu, being revived for the first time in millennia for this force. The Assyrians were prized by the British rulers for their fighting qualities, loyalty, bravery, and discipline and were used to help the British put down insurrections among the Arabs, Kurds, and Turkmen, guard the borders with Iran and Turkey, and protect British military installations. During the 1920s Assyrian levies saw action in effectively defeating Arab and Kurdish forces during anti-British rebellions in Iraq. After Iraq was granted independence by the British in 1933, the Assyrians suffered the Simile Massacre, where thousands of unarmed villagers were slaughtered by joint Arab-Kurdish forces of the Iraqi army. The massacres of civilians followed a clash between armed Assyrian tribesmen and the Iraqi army, where the Iraqi forces suffered a defeat after trying to disarm the Assyrians, whom they feared would attempt to secede from Iraq. Armed Assyrian levies were prevented by the British from going to the aid of these civilians, and the British government then whitewashed the massacres at the League of Nations. Despite these betrayals, the Assyrians were allied with the British during World War II, with 11 Assyrian companies seeing action in Palestine-Israel and another four serving in Greece, Cyprus, and Albania. Assyrians played a major role in the victory over Arab Iraqi forces at the Battle of Habaniya and elsewhere in 1941, when the Iraqi government decided to join World War II on the side of Nazi Germany. The British presence in Iraq lasted until 1955, and Assyrian levies remained attached to British forces until this time, after which they were disarmed and disbanded.
A further persecution of Assyrians took place in the Soviet Union in the late 1940s and early 1950s when thousands of Assyrians settled in Georgia, Armenia, and southern Russia were forcibly deported from their homes in the dead of night by Stalin without warning or reason to Central Asia, with most being relocated to Kazakhstan, where a small minority still remain. The period from the 1940s through to 1963 was a period of respite for the Assyrians in northern Iraq and northeast Syria. The regime of Iraqi President Qasim in particular saw the Assyrians accepted into mainstream society. Many urban Assyrians became successful businessmen, a number of Assyrians moved south to cities such as Baghdad, Basra, and Naziriyah to enhance their economic prospects, others were well represented in politics, the military, the arts and entertainment, Assyrian towns, villages, farmsteads, and Assyrian quarters in major cities flourished undisturbed, and Assyrians came to excel and be overrepresented in sports such as boxing, football, athletics, wrestling and swimming. However, in 1963, the Ba'ath Party took power by force in Iraq, and came to power in Syria the same year. The Ba'athists, though secular, were Arab nationalists, and set about attempting to Arabaize the many non-Arab peoples of Iraq and Syria, including the Assyrians. This policy included refusing to acknowledge the Assyrians as an ethnic group, banning the publication of written material in Eastern Aramaic, and banning its teaching in schools, together with an attempt to Arabaize the ancient pre-Arab heritage of Mesopotamian civilization. The policies of the Baathists have also long been mirrored in Turkey whose nationalist governments have refused to acknowledge the Assyrians as an ethnic group since the 1920s, and have attempted to Turkify the Assyrians by calling them Semitic Turks and forcing them to adopt Turkish names and language. In Iran, Assyrians continued to enjoy cultural, religious and ethnic rights, but due to the Islamic Revolution of 1979 their community has been diminished. In the aftermath of the Iraq War of 2003, Assyrians became the targets of Islamist terrorist attacks and intimidation from both Sunni and Shia groups, as well as criminal kidnapping organizations, forcing many in southern and central Iraq to relocate to safer Assyrian regions in the north of the country or northeast Syria. In recent years, Assyrians in northern Iraq and northeast Syria have become the target of attacks amounting to genocide by Islamist militants like ISIL and Nusra Front. In 2014, ISIL attacked Assyrian towns and villages in the Assyrian homelands of northern Iraq and northeast Syria, and Assyrians forced from their homes in cities such as Mosul had their houses and possessions stolen both by ISIL and also by their own former Arab Muslim neighbors. Assyrian Bronze Age and Iron Age monuments and archaeological sites, as well as numerous Assyrian churches and monasteries, have been systematically vandalized and destroyed by ISIL. These include the ruins of Nineveh, Kalhu. ISIL destroyed a 3,000-year-old ziggurat. ISIL destroyed Virgin Mary Church, in 2015 St. Mark Urka's church was destroyed and the cemetery was bulldozed. Assyrians in both Iraq and Syria have responded by forming armed Assyrian militias to defend their territories, and despite being heavily outnumbered and outgunned have had success in driving ISIL from Assyrian towns and villages, and defending others from attack. Armed Assyrian militias have also fought ISIL alongside armed groups of Kurds, Turkmen, Yazidis, Syriac Aramean Christians, Shabaks, Armenian Christians, Kalya, Mandeans, Circassians, and Shia Muslim Arabs and Iranians. A Euro Edukanasha Euro, translates to A Euro Earth ones who sacrifice a Euro.
The group was formed days after ISIL took over Mosul. The militia is made up of volunteers, who come from all over the Nineveh plain. Dukin Nasha is supported by a Syrian patriotic party and are led by Wilson Camus. It is estimated that nearly 60% of Iraqi Assyrians have fled. Assyrians who have fled have ended up all over the world. 2009 U.S. Census Bureau survey reported that roughly 100,000 have relocated to the United States. Assyria continued to exist as a geopolitical entity until the Arab Islamic conquest in the mid 7th century. Assyrian identity, personal, family, and tribal names and both the spoken and written evolution of Mesopotamian Aramaic have survived among the Assyrian people from ancient times to this day. An Assyrian calendar has been revived. Assyrian was a dialect of Akkadian language, a member of the eastern branch of the Semitic family and the oldest historically attested of the Semitic languages, which began to appear in written form in the 29th century BC. The first inscriptions in Assyria proper, called Old Assyrian, were made in the Old Assyrian period. The ancient Assyrians also used Sumerian in their literature and liturgy, although to a more limited extent in the Middle and Neo-Assyrian periods, when Akkadian became the main literary language. During the 3rd millennium BC, a very intimate cultural symbiosis developed between the Sumerians and Akkadian speakers, which included widespread bilingualism. The influence of Sumerian on Akkadian is evident in all areas, from lexical borrowing on a massive scale, to syntactic, morphological, and phonological convergence. This has prompted scholars to refer to Sumerian and Akkadian in the 3rd millennium BC as a sprach bund. Akkadian gradually replaced Sumerian as the spoken language of Mesopotamia somewhere around the turn of the 3rd and the 2nd millennium BC, but Sumerian continued to be used as a sacred, ceremonial, literary, and scientific language in Mesopotamia until the 1st century AD. In the Neo-Assyrian period, the Aramaic language became increasingly common, more so than Akkadiana Euro this was thought to be largely due to the mass deportations undertaken by Assyrian kings, in which large Aramaic-speaking populations, conquered by the Assyrians, were relocated to Assyria and interbred with the Assyrians and due to the fact that Tiglath Pileser II made it the lingua franca of Assyria and its empire in the 8th century BC. The destruction of the Assyrian capitals of Nineveh and Assur by the Babylonians, Medes, and their allies, ensured that much of the bilingual elite were wiped out. By the 7th century BC, much of the Assyrian population used distinct Akkadian-influenced Eastern Aramaic varieties and not Akkadian itself. The last Akkadian inscriptions in Mesopotamia date from the 1st century AD. The Syriac language also emerged in Assyria during the 5th century BC, and during the Christian era, Syriac literature and Syriac script were to become hugely influential. However, the descendant Akkadian-influenced Eastern Aramaic dialects from the Neo-Assyrian Empire, as well as Akkadian and Mesopotamian Aramaic personal, tribal, family and place names, still survive to this day among Assyrian people and are spoken fluently by up to one million Assyrians, with a further number having lesser and varying degrees of fluency. These dialects which contain many Akkadian loanwords and grammatical features are very different from the now almost extinct Western Aramaic of the Arameans in the Levant and Transjordan, which does not have any Akkadian grammatical structure or loanwords. After 90 years of effort, the University of Chicago in 2011 completed an Assyrian dictionary, the style of which is more like an encyclopedia than a dictionary. The Assyrians, like the rest of the Mesopotamian peoples, 
followed ancient Mesopotamian religion, with their national god Ashur having the most importance to them during the Assyrian Empire. This religion gradually declined with the advent of Syriac Christianity between the 1st and 10th centuries. The major deities worshipped in Assyria include the original pagan religion of the Assyrians was widely adhered to until around the 4th century, and survived in pockets until at least the 10th century. However, Assyrians today are exclusively Christian, with most following the Assyrian Church of the East, Chaldean Catholic Church, Ancient Church of the East, Syriac Orthodox Church, Syriac Catholic Church, Assyrian Pentecostal Church and Assyrian Evangelical Church. Assyrians had begun to adopt Christianity between the 1st and 3rd centuries AD. The Assyrian people originally adhered to one of two churches the Assyrian Church of the East, an East Syrian Rite Church, or the Syriac Orthodox Church, a West Syrian Rite Church. However, now there are nearly 20 different Assyrian Christian churches including the ones followed by ethnically Malayala converts in India, known as St. Thomas Christians who are not regarded as Assyrians. The first new church formed around 100 years after the massacres by Dimur during the 14th century due to the schism of 1552 which occurred among the Assyrians of northern Mesopotamia when a large number of Nestorian Assyrians in Amid elected a rival patriarch named Shimon VIII Yohanan Soleika after becoming dissatisfied with the leadership of the Assyrian Church. Due to a need for an official ordination, Soleika went into communion with the Roman Catholic Church after at first failing to gain acceptance within the Syriac Orthodox Church. Rome named this new church the Church of Assyria and Mosul and its first leader Patriarch of the East Assyrians in 1553 AD. Soon after coming back Seleka was assassinated by supporters of the rival Patriarch in al kosh but was able to form a new church structure and line of succession known as the Shimon Line prior to his death. This group of Assyrians eventually broke off ties with Rome, moved en masse to the Hakari Mountains, and returned to the Nestorian faith they once adhered to prior to the schism of 1552. A decade or so before the Shimon line broke off ties with Rome, another faction within the Assyrian church entered into communion with Rome known as the Josephite line, and upon the Shimon line leaving, inherited the now vacant Church of Assyria and Mosul, which was renamed the Chaldean Catholic Church in 1683. This is now believed to be due to an error by the Catholic Church, but now due to that error their followers became known as Chaldean Catholics or Chaldo-Assyrians despite having no ethnic, historical, linguistic, cultural, or geographic connections whatsoever to the by now long extinct Chaldean tribe of southeast Mesopotamia. Later on in the 1830s the original Assyrian Church of the East structure in al kosh combined with the Chaldean Catholic Jacobite one creating the modern Chaldean Catholic Church structure, which is ironic considering that the only remaining ethnic Assyrian Church to practice the Assyrian Church of the East denomination until this day is ruled by the Shimon line the very first church to split from the Assyrian Church of the East back in 1552. There was also another Nestorian denomination known as the Ancient Church of the East which split from the Assyrian Church of the East due to reforms passed under the rule of Shimon XXIII Ishai in the 1960s, but with the election of Georgius III in 2015 the churches had a reconciliation, and reunited. The Syriac Orthodox Church also has a large number of ethnically Assyrian adherents mainly in the historically Assyrian regions of northeast Syria and southeast Turkey who are known as Syriacs. The Syriac Orthodox Church has 5 million adherents across the globe, 
mostly in India, but is based in Damascus. However, since the 11th century it was based in the Saffron Monastery of Tur Abdin, and prior to that it was based in Antioch. Like the Nestorian churches, schisms also occurred within the Syriac Orthodox Church. In 1626 Jesuit and Capuchin missionaries began to proselytize among the Syriac Orthodox faithful at Aleppo, forming a larger pro-Catholic movement within the Syriac Orthodox Church. So in 1662, when the Syriac Orthodox Patriarchate had fallen vacant, the Catholic party was able to elect one of its own. Andrew Akijan as Patriarch of the Syriac Church. This provoked a split in the community, and after Akijan's death in 1677 two opposing patriarchs were elected, with one of those becoming the first Patriarch of the Syriac Catholic Church. This line of succession died out quickly, however but in 1782 with the election of Michael Jarway as Patriarch the Ignatius line has been the head of the Syriac Catholic Church since then, and also has its base in Damascus. Some Assyrians converted to Protestantism during the 20th century as well, forming the Assyrian Pentecostal Church and Assyrian Evangelical Church among others. Therefore, by the end of all the schisms which occurred, the Assyrian people are now followers of the Assyrian Church of the East, Chaldean Catholic Church, Ancient Church of the East, Syriac Orthodox Church, Syriac Catholic Church, Assyrian Pentecostal Church and Assyrian Evangelical Church, in addition to even more sub-churches which are located in India that are adherent to the Mother Seas in the Middle East. Assyrian architecture, like that of Babylonia, was influenced by Sumero-Akkadian styles, but early on developed its own distinctive style. Palaces sported colorful wall decorations, and seal cutting developed apace. Schools for scribes taught both the Babylonian and Assyrian dialects of Akkadian, and Sumerian and Akkadian literary works were often copied with an Assyrian flavor. The Assyrian dialect of Akkadian was used in legal, official, religious, and practical texts such as medicine or instructions on manufacturing items. During the 13th to 10th centuries, picture tales appeared as a new art form, a continuous series of images carved on square stone steels. Somewhat reminiscent of a comic book, these show events such as warfare or hunting placed in order from the upper left to the lower right corner of the steel with captions written underneath them. These and the excellent cut seals show that Assyrian art was beginning to surpass that of Babylon. Architecture saw the introduction of a new style of ziggurat, with two towers and colorful enameled tiles. Assyrian art preserved to the present day predominantly dates to the Neo-Assyrian period. Art depicting battle scenes, and occasionally the impaling of whole villages in gory detail, was intended to show the power of the emperor, and was generally made for propaganda purposes. These stone reliefs lined the walls in the royal palaces where foreigners were received by the king. Other stone reliefs depict the king with different deities and conducting religious ceremonies. Many stone reliefs were discovered in the royal palaces at Nimrud and Kir Sabad. A rare discovery of metal plates belonging to wooden doors was made at Balawat. Assyrian sculpture reached a high level of refinement in the Neo-Assyrian period. One prominent example is the winged bull Lamisu or Sheju that guard the entrances to the king's court. These were apotropaic meaning they were intended to ward off evil. C.W. Sarum states in the March of Archaeology that Lamasi were typically sculpted with five legs so that four legs were always visible, whether the image were viewed frontally or in profile. 
Although works of precious gems and metals usually do not survive the ravages of time, some fine pieces of Assyrian jewelry were found in royal tombs at Nimrud. There is ongoing discussion among academics over the nature of the Nimrud lens, a piece of quartz unearthed by Austin Henry Layard in 1850, in the Nimrud Palace complex in northern Iraq. A small minority believe that it is evidence for the existence of ancient Assyrian telescopes, which could explain the great accuracy of Assyrian astronomy. Other suggestions include its use as a magnifying glass for jewelers, or as a decorative furniture inlay. The Nimrud lens is held in the British Museum. The Assyrians were also innovative in military technology, with the use of heavy cavalry, sappers, siege engines etc. Achaemenid Assyria retained a separate identity, official correspondence being in Imperial Aramaic, and there was even a determined revolt of the two Assyrian provinces of Mata and Athura in 520 BC. Under Seleucid rule, however, Aramaic gave way to Greek as the official administrative language. Aramaic was marginalized as an official language, but remained spoken in both Assyria and Babylonia by the general populace. It also remained the spoken tongue of the indigenous Assyrian slash Babylonian citizens of all Mesopotamia under Persian, Greek, and Roman rule, and indeed well into the Arab period it was still the language of the majority, particularly in the north of Mesopotamia surviving to this day among the Assyrian Christians. Between 150 BC and 226 AD, Assyria changed hands between the Parthian Empire and the Romans until coming under the rule of the Sasanian Empire from 226 A Euro 651, where it was known as ASA. Rista N. A number of at least partly Neo-Assyrian kingdoms existed in the area between in the late Classical and early Christian period also, Adiabene, Hatra, and Osren. Classical historiographers and biblical writers had only retained a fragmented, very dim and often inaccurate picture of Assyria. It was remembered that there had been an Assyrian empire predating the Persian one, but all particulars were lost. Thus Jerome's Cron icon lists 36 kings of the Assyrians, beginning with Ninus, son of Belus, down to Sardanapalus, the last king of the Assyrians before the empire fell to Arbishas the Median. Almost none of these have been substantiated as historical with the exception of the Neo-Assyrian and Babylonian rulers listed in the Canon of Kings beginning with Nabonassar. The Assyrians began to form and adopt a distinct Eastern Christianity, with its accompanying Syriac literature, between the 1st and 3rd centuries AD, however, ancient Mesopotamian religion was still alive and well into the 4th century and pockets survived into the 10th century and possibly as late as the 17th century in Mardin. However, the religion is now dead, and the Assyrian people, though still retaining Eastern Aramaic dialects as a mother tongue, are now wholly Christian. The modern discovery of Babylonia and Assyria begins with excavations in Nineveh in 1845, which revealed the library of Ashurbanipal. Decipherment of the cuneiform script was a formidable task that took more than a decade, but, by 1857, the Royal Asiatic Society of Great Britain and Ireland was convinced that reliable reading of cuneiform texts was possible. Assyriology has since pieced together the formerly largely forgotten history of Mesopotamia. In the wake of the archaeological and philological rediscovery of ancient Assyria, Assyrian nationalism became increasingly popular among the surviving remnants of the Assyrian people, who have come to strongly identify with ancient Assyria. Attribution Coordinates, 
36A degree 00 A Euro superscript 2 and 43A degree 18A Euro superscript 2 EI slash I 36.0 A degree and 43.3 A degree EI slash 36.0, 43.3.